Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our regular scheduled council meeting for March 20th, 2023 at 6.30 p.m. Good evening, administrators, council, and our audience members. Thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, Ms. Berner, if you would call the roll, please. Mayor Lowry. Here. And Vice Mayor Grimmis Pepsin. Councilman Bond. Here. Councilwoman Eggleston. Here. Councilman Cook. Here. Councilman Lindsay. Here. Councilman Grobold. Here. Six members present. Thank you. Let's see. And tonight's invocation will be done by Fire Chief Trustee. Father, Lord, we thank you for the day and all thy many blessings and many favors. Thank you for the blessing to be able to come together, Lord, to do your work. And we pray that you let thy perfect will be done in this meeting. Bless our city, our citizens, our troops, and our families, and our first responders. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Individual liberty and justice for all. All right, moving on. We'll need to action on the uh, minutes for this special meeting held on February 28, 2023. Two minutes. Second. Uh, motion by Ms. Eggleston, second by Mr. Lindsay. Okay. Any discussion on those minutes, Council? Any writing, Ms. Burner? Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Minutes accepted 6 0. All right, and then we need a motion to accept the minutes for the regular scheduled council meeting on March 6th. Go ahead. Second. Motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Ms. Eggleston. Any discussion? All right, when you're ready, please. All right, Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Sorry. Yes. Councilman Vaughn? Yes. Mm -hmm. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Those minutes are accepted 6 0. All right. Thank you. All right. Moving down to communications. Um, Mr. Bridge is out this evening. Obviously, Mr. Kitko is filling in as city manager, assistant city manager. Uh, we need to go over our charter review uh, meeting that we need to get taken care of. So uh, I don't have Mr. Bridge's availability. Um, he didn't, you know, leave me a specific date, so we could do this one of two ways. We could set a date, and hopefully he can make that date, or we could just attach it to the next council meeting, which would be the first one in April, and that's usually a pretty slow meeting anyway, so. And that one starts at 6, right? Right, and it starts at 6. So, I move that we uh, set that meeting for the first meeting in April. Second. So, motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Mr. Roadwall to set the charter of you at the uh, next regular schedule council meeting. Third. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Uh, so Mayor Lowry. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Roadwald. Yes. Passes 6 0. All right. And moving on, uh, something uh, added to tonight's communication by. Wanted, uh, wanted to do something real special tonight for three of our local businesses. Uh, New Kalau has, you know, obviously a lot of business in town, a lot of great uh, organizations and businesses, uh, pizza places, and I mean, you name it. Uh, but uh, we have, in my opinion, we've got three places that really stand out and they're unique because they're nowhere else in the world other than here. We've got Arrow Queen, which everybody's familiar with, Water Dog, who's, you know, is an amazing place and then we've got lock and Destin number two who uh puts out you know some of the greatest tacos in the world so um, you know we're lucky to have these kind of businesses because it's you know it's kind of you know, three great businesses that are stable to our community that everybody has a story about that they grew up on arrow queen or they or they know the guys at uh, water dog or they get to hear uh, a lot of Christians jokes over at Lock and Dustin number two or get to see his mom yell at him because he's talking too much and isn't getting the work done. <laughs> so, but, uh, I, you know, it's, it's nice to have these kind of businesses in town that uh, are unique to our area because, again, it provides a lot of good, you know, memories and, and obviously it provides for our community when you want to go get a bite to eat. Uh, and, and it's nice to have those kind of establishments in town. So I wanted to give those three businesses a, a proclamation tonight just because 
you know, not that we're not appreciative of any of the other big businesses, you know, Domino's and places like that, but, you know, these are three places that are privately owned and they, you know, they, they do such a great job when it comes to, you know, interacting with the community and being part of our community and stepping up when it comes to, uh, you know, sponsorships of baseball teams or donating food to food drives and things like that. So, uh, you know, these businesses get hit a lot with, uh, you know, asking for donations. You know, they, they hear it a lot. You know, can, can you donate for this or can you donate for that or can we get, you know, sponsorship for this team or for this organization? And uh, they, they always seem to find a way to, uh, to make sure that they put their best foot forward for a lot of these groups and kids and organizations. And we appreciate that uh, from a city standpoint because without you guys, New Call I wouldn't have these great places and uh, this, you know, the great, the great uh, memories that we have. So. Um, I've got three proclamations, so what I'm going to do is I'll have you guys um, line up behind me and we'll go with um, Stephen, who is uh, Stephen uh, Preckle, who is here um, for his son, who actually owns Water Dog. He couldn't leave the grill tonight. He said, you know, he's, uh, he's busy and I completely understand. So, but uh, Stephen and, and the rest of you uh, all come up this way, please. And we'll have Stephen come down this way. We'll do um, Lock and Death over the middle and yeah. Arrow yeah. Queen over this way. I'll have a wide angle for both of us. We're going to move out of your way. Oh, okay. So, it takes Phil's hair. Uh, this is for you guys. I'm just going to read the center one because they're all the same. That's a different name. Seven hairs. Mr. Christian, you guys can stand here in the middle. And Steve. Unfortunately, you feel the proclamation. You want to pipe up a little bit there, So I'm going to read this. This is what they all say. So, <clears throat> proclamation whereas the city of New Colorado has three unique and extremely popular seasonal eating establishments that cater to many different tastes, and whereas these establishments have built a relationship with their customers that can only be done with superior customer service and providing quality food. And whereas La Condesa, Arrow Queen, and Water Dog are important are a part, important role of life, whether the whether, whether they help I apologize. I got all confused. Play an important role in our community, in our in our quality of life whether as a place to celebrate a special occasion, a place to refresh and recharge while on the go, or as a place to meet with colleagues over business, lunch, or dinner. And whereas La Condesa, Arab Green, and Water Dog continue, success in New Carlisle helps encourage new residents and other businesses to re relocate in our city. And whereas La Condesa, Arab Green, and Water Dog <clears throat> have been an important community partner in helping area organizations with sponsorships and other worthy charitable causes. And whereas the city of New Colorado wishes to honor La Condesa, Water Dog, and Arrow Queen for their success, dedication, and the positive role they play in our city. But now, therefore, I, like our mayor, the city of New Colorado, do hereby proclaim March 20th, 2023 as Restaurant Appreciation Day and encourage restaurants or residents to patronize the restaurants of the city of New Colorado by thanking them for all the ways they give back to our community. I would like to get a picture of each group of you guys. Okay. Get a group of this middle group first. Okay. Hold this up, please. Let me squeeze in there. What's that? <laughs> no favorites. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Awesome. Thank you guys. Thanks for everything. You're welcome. Thanks for coming. Come on, Jason and Bonnie. Yeah. I put my ears in. Get that close. Good. Okay. And then Stephen.
Thank you, guys. I just want to make yes, say yes, please. I don't know if anybody knows that Jack, the previous owner, passed away here a couple weeks ago, and they're going to do a special tribute to him sometime this summer. So they'll be advertising for that. So thanks for the award. Yes, sir. Thank you. You guys are welcome to stay for a long, boring meeting, but obviously you don't have to because I know you guys all have businesses to run and things of that nature. So thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Uh, we appreciate everyone in New Carlisle, you know, that supported us through the years. Um, you know, hopefully this year for better years, as always. Uh, we always expand and, you know, uh, with the help of everyone here in, in New Carlisle, we would like to announce that you guys will probably see us more often uh, as we will be opening the top of And then we'll have a grassy you, lot right next to the park. And then after you out, <laughs> and then after you outgrow that, a restaurant. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't hear you. Oh, that's the, oh yes. Right, yes. Thank you guys. Thanks, Jason. Thanks, Donna. Right. Just gotta get them to get more Yeah. <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, city manager report, Mr. Kitko, as I said, will be going in for Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Mayor, members of council, members of the public. Uh, we'll start off this evening by going over our police report uh, presented by uh, Deputy Major Zach. Uh, thank you. How are you, uh, members of the public council, Mayor? Uh, the city of New Carlisle's uh, Police Department Sheriff's Office took in the month of February 150 calls generated 36 reports of those assisted 24 had 16 criminal arrests five felony arrests five misdemeanor arrests and we had six warrants that we made arrests on we conducted 76 traffic stops we issued 34 traffic warnings we issued 42 moving citations and we've done 462 building checks and we investigated uh, four traffic crashes. And I just want to add that we are, have three new deputies now, uh, Deputy Bowers, uh, Deputy O'Brien, and Deputy uh, Arnold, who are all with us now uh, and on board so, for our total of five. Very good. Awesome. Great. How's um, everything? Safe and sound for the most part? Everything is safe and sound for the most part. Everything's going well. Good. No, no major incidences or issues? Not right now. <laughs> Hopefully not at all. That's right. <laughs> well, thank you, sir. We thank appreciate you. it. Thank you, Dave, Deputy oh, Major Sire. Mr. Lindsay had a question. I apologize. I always have a question for the deputy. Where's the, uh, the assist, the 24 assist? Is they someplace in the county or down about? Uh, they will be. They would be close right here, probably right in uh, in the Park Lane or Medway area, mm -hmm. or uh, I believe we had an assist uh, in uh, North Campton at the at the uh, roundabout up there. We had a, a pursuit that was up there that we ended up assisting up there with. So just mm -hmm. right close, relatively close to the area. Okay, I'm just curious as all were that you wouldn't run into the east side of the county somewhere. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> nope. They're they're all close right here. Okay. They're only on a uh, a. Uh, Priority call. We don't uh, go out unless it's a uh, two-man priority call, and they need somebody. And nobody else is close. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Lindsay. Anyone else? Right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Deputy Major Sack. Now, moving on to our fire and EMS report presented by Chief <clears throat> Steve Trusty. Administration, Council, and citizens. For the month of February, the New Palau Fire Division responded to 96 EMS calls in the city, 10 in Elizabeth Township. The division responded to eight fire-related calls in the city and none in Elizabeth Township. We had three EMS calls answered 
mutual aid by either Pike Township or Bethel Clark due to Medic 5-2 being on a response. We answered four mutual aid calls for Pike Township and five mutual aid calls for Bethel Clark. Uh, I know I announced this at the last meeting, but I just want to do it on a record basis. Uh, the division was awarded a federal grant in the amount of $164,190.47. This grant will allow the division to purchase 19 new self-contained breathing apparatus, the air packs that we wear, um, and a new compressor that will, to uh, refill the air cylinders for the air packs. This is the largest grant that the division has ever received. The equipment that will be purchased through this grant will last anywhere from uh, 10 to 15 years or more. Council, any questions, comments, feedback for Chief? Mr. Lindsay. Uh, uh, Chief, have we heard anything about the uh, grant for the engine? We still have not got it. I know this is going to be every meeting. We haven't got a denial letter or we haven't got a approval letter. Okay. So it's kind of like, you know, the, the way the grant thing is falling this year is just ridiculous. Nope. Oh, I know. Just, you know, they already opened up the new grant for this year to apply for it, <clears throat> and they're still awarding out grants. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's like trickles. We'll do, we'll do two or three grant awards and then nothing for three, month, for three months. Okay. But. I understand. Thank you, sir. Anything else, Mr. Owen? Like they say, Chief, no news is good news, they say. Uh, right. So hopefully we'll get the grant for the engine. That'd be awesome to help pay for it. The uh, 15 or 19 new uh, air packs you have, are they in service yet or been no, ordered or they coming? They'll be coming uh, for the grant. Uh, Mr. Kiko contested to this. Once you get the grant, you're awarded the grant, then there's a whole list of other paperwork and everything that we have to go through. And then we'll want, after all that's done, they'll actually uh, set up an account in our, in our name that Ms. Harris will be in control of. And basically we go to buy something, we tell her, okay, we're buying this, this is the amount. She sends them an email, says we're buying this, and then they dump the money out of that account into our account. Uh, so it'll, it'll be a little process. I would say by the time uh, mid to late summer, we should have everything in, in station and service. We've already, we've already picked which company we want to go with for our packs, and we've already picked the company that we want to use to buy the compressor from. May I ask who those companies are, sir? Uh, breathe Air for the compressor. Okay. And for the air packs, we're going with uh, Draker. Pardon me? Draker. Draker, okay. All right. Both good companies. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, with uh, Draker, they were the they were excellent pack, but they were the low bid. Um, but even at the low bid, one air pack, you buy, when you buy an air pack, you have to buy the air pack cylinder and a spare cylinder. And, mm -hmm. and the mask. Uh, air packs, two cylinders and a mask is at right at $7,800 a piece. Wow. The uh, one more uh, question or comment, and <clears throat> you don't have to if you don't want to. Can you explain to the public about the uh, the air compressor and what type of air compressor it is? Because I have one in my garage. We could use it, but I don't think no. It it's would a totally different type of air compressor. <laughs> it's a little different. It's uh, high pressure, low volume, and it has to be set up just for filling breathable air, uh, like air pack or scuba bottles, that type of thing and it's inspected twice a year and uh, air samples done twice a year to make sure the air is clean, everything is good. Uh, so it's, it's a pretty controlled piece of equipment. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, thank you, Chief, for the report, sir. And just to add on, there will probably be legislation coming just because of the overall cost. Mm -hmm. so it will be coming sometime. Thank you, Fire Chief. And moving on to our finance report uh, presented by Ms. Colleen Harris. Thank you, Mr. Kitko, Council, and members of the public. Um, reporting on our February finances, we received um, $642,527.07 in revenue for the month of February, and we spent $632,359.22 for our total expenditures. So going down for the year um, received to date, January and February, we've received $1,621,114.02, and we spent $1,415,072.08. Our beginning cash um, 
Our beginning cash statement was $7,510,472.46 at the beginning of the year, January 1. Our ending balance at the end of February is $6,570,828.27. Bank statements are all reconciled. On the income tax collection, we received $181,000. $446.56 for the month of February, and that is 5.45% uh, higher than this time last year. That always fluctuates, but we just record it each month. On the mayor's court, the mayor's court for the month of February received $5,558. That's in fines and court costs, and that's a total for the year of $7,739. And I believe um, for the expenditures, I put in on a little P&L for Mayor's Court with the revenue that we we had the little loss period from last year, and then our revenue for the first two months and our expenditures were only four thousand seven hundred four dollars. We're in the red, only eight hundred forty-two dollars. So we should be in the black hopefully next month. I hope. That is the summary of my finance report. All the reports are online, and I'll entertain any questions. Any questions for Ms. Harris? Second. Motion by Ms. Eggleston to accept your motion. Motion to accept by Ms. Eggleston, second by Mr. Romero. This is for the finance report, correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. right. <clears throat> Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. That's accepted 6 0. Move to accept the court report. Second. First by Mr. Lindsay, second by Ms. Eggleston for the marriage report. Any questions, Council? All right. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. <coughs> Accepted 6 0. All right. Uh, thank you for the report, Ms. Harris. Thank you. Good job as always. And moving on to Mr. Kitko for Mr. Kitko's report. <laughs> uh, thank you, Mayor, members of uh, Council, members of the public. Under the Public Works Department, uh, we are still working on our citywide tree trimming, and then we will be getting uh, renting a um, stump grinder to go out and finish some of the stumps. I have been making multiple calls on the light out here since January 6th on the Cobra light for the Smith Park Shutter House. It is in the hands of AES to approve. They are trying to push it through, um, but like some of those, they are not very uh, fast. Um, before I move on to the street sweep, I'm going to complete the report and we'll uh, do a little discussion on it. Uh, water department, private well inspections to start April 1st. By April 15th, I have to have some responses back to the EPA on how some of the inspections have gone. Well number four, pitless adaptive project is complete and well four is back in service. Well number one is currently being cleaned uh, by the contractor. Two hydrants have been replaced with more replacements to begin in the next couple weeks. It did get delayed. We've had our back truck uh, down to get some work done, but it is back in service. Sewer department, there has no, been no updates. We're just working on submittals for the um, for Peter, Peterson Construction to put those um, clarifiers in. Uh, plan expansion study, you do have an ordinance for action tonight to approve that to complete you know, where and what time and when the wastewater plant needs to expand for these uh, future developments. And then the study should be completed in about three to six months. And then that study will be obviously you know, given to the city manager and then brought to council with updates on you know, what they find. 2022 road construction resurfacing projects, we are starting to work on estimates from the county to work with that and then ADA ramps on how much we will be able to you know, move forward with some of the new streets and, how, and some of the ADA ramps that we have to pick up on some of our previous overlay projects. Fenwick Drive phase two reconstruction, engineering is complete and bidding is to be around April. It is in the hands of the Clark County Community Development. Once that gets bid out and we receive bids, I will inform council at that time. The Carlisle Park phase one upgrade project, 
they, the surveys have come in and they're trying to finish that up to get that on their CAD system and then they will start working on the design of where the court will go, where the benches will go, where the additional swing and stuff will go. Uh, Nature Works grant, I really have no update. We do have an agreement signed and we'll be starting on that. So back up to uh, street sweeper proposals. Um, I did get some information from a couple different uh, sweepers and basically it comes down to what you guys have seen moving around here. They have an air sweeper and then a mechanical sweeper. The mechanical sweeper gets about 90%. The air sweeper picks up anything that it doesn't. But there is not one really that does both at the same time. The cost has come in to, well, I've, I've, I've called numerous cities to figure out, you know, what direction would you go? Would you get the air, as we've seen air in here, multiple places say it does work, but you have to have it in pristine condition to pick up most gravel, but it will leave some of the larger gravel especially if you're a city that does dura patching for repairs, which we do, and sometimes we use the larger number eight stone with our dura patcher. So we were looking at a mechanical sweeper, and I'm not sure if most have seen, but kind of the one we're, we're eyeing is a Elgin, which is the brand name, Pelican, which is the model. These are the ones that have kind of two tires in the front with the center bend and two close tires in the rear, and you normally see them on milling projects. So they have, a, they have brooms on the side, like a normal sweeper will, and then they have a conveyor belt with a broom in the rear. Same water system as anything else, you know, to keep dust down. That machine is, is right around 280 to 300,000. I just got a final proposal. I'm just verifying that all the stuff would be on it, but we did a purchase price. Uh, Ms. Harris had done some numbers for us of $300,000. That's basically the purchase price we'd be looking at. Couple different options to go in a five year or a seven year. In each of those five year, we, we did a down payment of 75,000. And for the seven year, we did an option with a down payment of 75,000 without. And we were thrown in an interest of 6%. I did get some municipal lease currently at 5.8. A prime rate right now is seven and a half, which as you know, the feds are getting ready to bump that up to seven and three quarters or eight. Uh, municipal leases usually do come in a little less. Um, but we are trying to work with a couple locals and um, municipal lease companies to see where we would get the best rate. So, for instance, our annual payment, you know, could potentially be, be between 53000 or 71000 in a five-year, depending on if you have a down payment or not. In a seven-year, it's going to be 40000 or a 54000 uh, annual payment. So, basically, where it comes down to brass tax is the... Uh, interest, you know, how much interest, interest would you pay? So the down payment on a five year, you're gonna pay about $42,000 on in interest over the course of five years. If you didn't put a down payment on, you're gonna bump that up about 15,000 to 57,000 in interest over the five years. <coughs> in a seven year term with a $75,000 down payment, uh, your interest cost is gonna be around 58,005. And with a seven year no down payment, you're gonna pay about 78,000. So the worst case scenario is 378,000, and the best case scenario would be 342,000, you know, depending on the years. Um, what I will do is I will get this, I'm trying to uh, double check numbers and everything, I can get this printed out or emailed out to council to see, you know, maybe, you know, if you guys are really interested, I've, Colleen and I have worked on the numbers, we've already approached Randy about it, What's the best way to do it? I can tell you that I am, if we can do it for making the purchase, I've made calls to, again, multiple municipalities, and Troy was in the same boat we were last year with the company that we contracted with. Right now there's two contractors, um, DSS and Sweeping Corp, and I heard that uh, DSS is, has, you know, picked up their game a little bit, got their finger on the pulse of the drivers, because that's the biggest issue is drivers while they're out here. By the time you get a complaint, you know, the dust cloud's already been going for about a half a mile. So that's about 15,000 a year. But I have a, I, I, we feel that being able to do our own streets multiple times a year, plus the main drags even more than that, and I am working with Bethel Township and another village, the village is pretty small, but working with Bethel Township on trying to get numbers on mileage, you know, what, what, what should we charge 
you know, at a fair price to sweep just Park Lane. That's the only area they have that has curb areas. It's not a big recoup. I think they're in mileage smaller than the city, and if we were paying 7,500 to get swept, so it's not a lot per year, but it is something, you know, that could go towards technically the payment, not maintenance or not hourly wages. Mm -hmm. So that's where I'm at with a street sweeper. So I'll entertain questions, comments, concerns. Um, um, initially, Mr. Kitcone, I think you brought this up in the past, or maybe we talked about it just in casual conversation. And I and I like the idea initially about maybe reaching out to say Park Lane and saying, look, we just bought this sweeper, we can recoup some of our money by going down there and getting paid X amount of dollars to, to sweep their their uh, plats a couple of times a year or whatever the agreement ended up being. But at the same time, after hearing your numbers, I personally would rather just not because it's going to be wear and tear on our vehicle. It's going to it's going to up our maintenance costs, I would assume. So I think if we are just saving the money alone from how much did you say from that paying that it's swept twice a year? About fifteen thousand. So we pay about it would be about fifteen thousand a year. I mean I know that's more than what our payment would be on the sweeper, but I think if my two cents, if we started sweeping another municipality, we're just going to add to the wear and tear on our 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 machine, and I would rather it last as long as possible and take care of our roads solely. But I mean, I'm all for the purchase as long as the finance director has no issue with it and, then, and the departments can, can come up with the cost of the bank. Anyone else? Mr. Vaughn. Is, you said that Troy was in the same position that, that we were in a couple of years ago or something? Uh, last year with the company. Okay. So uh, what are they doing? Uh, basically, they'll hire a company. They also have a, a sweeper of their own, uh, like Springfield, like Troy, like Tip. They have their own sweeper, but it's not enough to do everything they got. So they contract for that one citywide sweep, and then they do touch-ups by themselves on everything else. Just like Springfield, they are currently uh, contracted right now. They're doing their streets as we speak, but they do have an air sweeper and a mechanical that they can go. And of course, they, they develop a little more trash in the down, you know, people toss it out where we don't deal with much of pop cans, bottles, laying in our curbs and gutters. Okay. <clears throat> I was just wondering if there's an opportunity to have one of them do it rather than us. Yeah, they just have Whether one or two can. machines. And, yeah. and they're, they, they, I mean, they do break down even at four years old, three years old. You, you, you got it, it's, it's like a combine or a dozer. There's a lot of maintenance to them. Um, they, it's, again, personnel to bring their sweeper all the way over here. Hit, hit the hit the the items up. I mean, they they, they have a it's their full time job, is doing it. Clark County used to do sweeping as a contract to surface uh, serv service. They no longer do that, as well. Do we have somewhere inside to store that machine? Mm -hmm. Okay, because I know that they deteriorate pretty quick when they're left outside. If we were to make that purchase, so. and we are looking at the, some stainless options on it as well. I think are already fitted in there. Okay. Uh, and, and two, when you mentioned um, Park Lane would be like three days, I think is what they would be, um, j just just for numbers, yeah. um, just to let you know that. Do you have an idea of annual maintenance costs to that machine? Uh, it's new, so I really do not. Um, most of the other guys, you just never know what you're going to get into. Uh, I know Springfield right now on not this machine, but another one. This is a little less simple. You do have a conveyor. Uh, some of the air moving ones have those fans, which are thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars. One of their machines is only four years old, and they're putting a new fan in, and it was stainless. It's had a vibration. You know, got a one-year warranty on them, so you just never know. Um, but general maintenance, you know, you're probably looking at a, a thousand, probably in oil changes, um, water nozzles. Um, usually, if you you do it right, you you shouldn't have to replace your bristle heads in the and after one sweep and then do we have the manpower now to run this and take care of the other responsibilities I mean, we have somebody that we could dedicate to that or whatever well we we just hired a, a new well moved moving one person over and hiring a new person so we just elevated the, the department by one and once you get going into it uh, contract sweepers if they were to do it right would have been in and out of here in less than a week so for us to do the whole city would be less than a week. You know, so if you do it the whole city twice, some of our areas do rinse very well. Spinning, Willowick, some of those, they don't get as um, gridded up as say a dip we have in Scarf, uh, Main Street, just where you have that traffic. 
those are the ones, you know, in about a half a day, you can have all the main drags done. Uh, it does take longer for the machine to work when it is a little dirtier. When you stay on top of it, you can, I would say you can go a little faster, but five mile an hour sure. is, is normal. Okay. So we can Thank you. possibly get that something like on a quarterly rotation, at least the main drags? That, that's our goal is, you know, citywide at minimum once and then hit all the streets you notice that, you know, take, gets that debris, hit them almost, you know, maybe once a month. I mean, that's a half a day probably hitting those mains. Mr. Cook. Mr. Kiko, is that uh, debris that you're picking up in the sweeper, is that still classed as uh, special waste? Um, so what we, would, what we do is we, um, I don't know what it's technically classed, but we get roll off dumpsters for it. We have, we have it sent off. So we, usually a dumpster is 350 bucks per sweep. And I think we filled up, well, with this last city one where it was only done for the one whole time, one season, I think we filled up two 30 yard roll offs. So, you know, you could expect us to probably fill one roll off up uh, a sweep. So they take it, they just, whatever they do with the sweepings. Okay. The we don't have, we don't handle them. Last I knew, it was classed as spatial waste, which was a higher tonnage figure than what normal trash is. I know the company we, we've been using for roll-offs didn't charge me any more than normal. Okay. That would be my concern. I am familiar with the Pelican, the Elgin sweepers, both very good models. Um, Maintenance is a little bit of a priority, I think. And I think that you're going to probably find that the maintenance cost is going to be a little bit more. But I think that once you get into this, uh, the reps will be able to help you with that. Mm -hmm. Thanks, sir. Ms. Williams. You said 340 some thousand to 370 some thousand that's with interest that's with interest totally you know five or a seven year yeah right <clears throat> and you're only going to, you're going to sweep maybe four times a year we're thinking at this point you know minimum city would be you know one whole time maybe two and then probably every month during the sweeping season i think that's an awful lot of money for what we're would be using it and over the long term how much money will that save us versus having another having a company come in i mean right now it's cost would you say 7500 for them per, to come per sweep, sweep and our and we need to do two times a year so that's fifteen thousand dollars a year i don't know we could probably sweep the city for 30 years for fifteen thousand a year for three hundred thousand dollars or i don't know i just pulled a calculator up figure it out, but just guesstimate, maybe 25, 000, 25 years for 300,000. I just think it's, uh, in my opinion, I think it's excessive for the amount of use it's going to get. I agree with you on the surface. I really do. Um, when you look at the, the dollars, but the complaints, the complaints that we get, what it looks like, what the streets look like, is sometimes that outweighs us getting beat up and then me following the truck around the whole time because they don't do a good job. And, and other municipalities are dealing with it too. It's not just me, um, but the, it's just, it's not working. And, and I can't tell you then in any time I've had a contractor suite, have I ever just let them do their work and be happy with it? Never. Well, I know the last couple of times that they swept, they had a humongous dust cloud following them so they wasn't either putting enough water down or something i don't know exactly how they work a lot of times it's they run out of water yeah they just, and instead of filling it up they just keep on sweeping mm -hmm. uh is this for a brand new one or mm -hmm. you brand new brand new and what's the life expectancy of it well they're getting trade-ins right now in places like um a and b asphalt you know these big mm -hmm. companies they run these things through mill millings 20 years. I was I was pretty surprised. I asked a couple of the contractors how old they are. So, so they're, we, they're just getting trade-ins at 20. So we could probably get 30 or 40 years out of one for no more than, I mean, 
we're not going to be doing no milling with one, but you know, sweeping up. I mean, it, it's um, it's it's very possible. I'm not saying it's a guarantee. You just no, nothing's guaranteed. <laughs> I know taxes. <laughs> That's all right. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Roadwell. Mr. Kickwell, have we got a, a, um, a proposal for this year's street, street sweeping? I do not have a proposal yet for this year. Well, I'm just assuming that that, that, that price is going to go up. Like We're probably, probably close, close to, to eight. 20. A rumor mill has it that there's a third company out of Indianapolis. Again, nothing really close. Um, that may be an option, but. Well, I'm just, you know, piggybacking off Mr. Lindsay's thing. I mean. If it was fifteen thousand last year for two, and you just look at just inflation alone and everything else, you're probably looking at closer to twenty to twenty-two <clears throat> this year and for the same more, service. And we're gonna have more roads in a few years. Yes. Um, so, why? Well, yes, at, at current cost, it would take us thirty years to pay for itself. Um, but with inflation included, it, it, it maybe drops down to twenty, and then like Mr. Lowry just said, with added roads to the city, um, maybe we're now down to 15. Um, so if that lasts us 30 years, that's 15 years of, don't want to say free service, but now it's paying us back. Mm -hmm. And I do see interest still going up a little bit. I haven't heard anything about it going down. There is a price increase coming for, the, for everybody, um, for this company coming up, I think at the end of 23, as well, this machine just four years ago sold for 175. Yeah, that's uh, it's you know the 300 now. Mm -hmm. oh, you should have bought it last year or three years ago. Oh, I, I was shocked <laughs> when I heard this the selling price in 17. All right, any other discussions on that topic? Not, not on that, Mr. Cook. Would I be able to recommend and counsel go along with the fact that we put this on for a work session somewhere down the line when Mr. Kitko gets all of his numbers together? Yeah. I, um, sir. Uh, I think once Mr. Kitko gets his information together and emails it out to us, so we can all look at it. I think we could handle it during a regular council meeting itself, or maybe extend it 30 minutes or something. Um, yeah, because I'll send you this, the proposal, so you'll have the true what what the guy said, and there'll be a municipal lease in there um, from a company. We just don't name them until I'm done, you know, pricing out there. Um, I can have that to you probably tomorrow or you know Wednesday. Which, which one? Uh, which one are you looking at, the Elgin or the, uh, the other one? So it's an Elgin Pelican. 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 Elgin Pelican. Yep. Well, so you, you're, you're still getting a few numbers plugged before? I, I, I got pretty much the numbers. The only thing it would be is if, if there was a, you know, let's say, yeah, we're really interested in moving forward because it's 11 months build time, maybe a hair quicker. Okay. Um, is the biggest thing is price, interest rates. That's that's the key driver here. If if it's time to move on with it, and then because um, it'll take legislation, right? Uh, to do well, it. I'll tell you what. If you can send all that information out to council, and then council look at it, and at the next meeting, if we need to have a, a separate meeting, then we can make a motion to do so. So that'll give us a little bit of time. Yeah, I'll, I'll uh, shoot for getting it out tomorrow or Wednesday. Okay, everything and. Soak it all up. Tomorrow or Wednesday? Either or. As you said, yes. Anything else, Mr. Ray? No. Not on that topic. <coughs> For, For yeah. road construction. Yeah. Have we, I mean, what's the cost look like this year compared to last year when it comes to asphalt? And, and have we have come down any? Uh, I know our engineer's estimate for Fenwick had went up probably 20%. Another 20? Yeah. Basically, an asphalt and fuel cost. We'll see when bids come in. You know, some some sharpen their pencil a little bit, but okay. we're not. I think the days where we were getting really, really good pricing compared to the engineer's estimate, uh, are starting that gap is really getting narrowed. Yeah. Okay. All right. We're back to you and the. I guess you're going to the C manager's report again. There. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Mom. Question um, about the water softeners. Mm -hmm. Is that back online yet? 
Uh, one and two is online. I thought I had it in my report, sorry. Uh, so one and two are back online. Three could be online, I think tomorrow. They took the bacteria sample up today to the city of Troy. They do our emergency stuff. And if it passes when we get the numbers tomorrow, then it will be putting it online. We're gonna be running it manual though, like it'll run and we have to manually regenerate it just because we're waiting on actuators. They told us to be like 16 weeks on these motors, so nothing's coming fast. Yeah, well, that's the way, yeah, that's the <laughs> we're in. But, so does that, I mean, that covers all of our water then? It'll be back to softened again? For yeah, yeah, we're back in, back to soften. If it comes in tomorrow, we'll be, we'll be dropping the numbers down a little bit lower in the softening category. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Mr. Lindsay. Question on the regenerating of the uh, number three. Mm -hmm. How long does it take to do that manually? Do you just start it and then it cycles and stops, or so, do you have to stop it too? So there's, there's uh, four stages in it, mm -hmm. and you just have to be there during the one stage. You can go do other things because one stage is 50 minutes. Okay. So they'll do plant duties while it's doing its thing, and then when that part's done, then it'll go over, operate one valve. They're both it high level and then they can put it back in service. Okay. So it takes like an hour to do the regeneration of it. Yeah, it's a, it's a little over an hour for the cycle, but the person doesn't have to sit there and watch water flow for 50 minutes. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. And back to you, Mr. City Manager. Assistant City Manager. All right, moving on for informational items, discussion topics. Uh, City Council meeting start time is uh, 6 p.m. effective on the first meeting of April, 4-3, in every meeting and thereafter. Uh, DR Horton Development, uh, the phase map recently was submitted and is under review. And uh, Mr. Bridge has been in early TIF uh, estimate discussions and he said le legislation will be um, to follow. 2023 fireworks show. Display date is June 24th, 2023, same as last year. The rain out date is June 25th, 2023, and the total cost is 17,000. And if you see the note in your agenda, uh, if you want to spend more on the show, there's currently $22,000 currently allocated in the budget. And if council's desire is to Increase that from 17,000 and, and bump it up. Um, we request a motion to do so. So we budgeted. That's for the agreement. Right. So we budgeted 22, but the last show we did was 17,000. So. That's the current agreement, yes. Gotcha. Council, any feedback on having you forward? No. Sir? I thought the show we put on last year for 17 grand was an awesome show. I don't think that needs to be bumped up any. Uh, in my opinion, I don't know what council. <coughs> I would agree, and uh, I think that in talking with Mike Elsner from the fireworks company in the past, he has recommended that we stay somewhat, I guess I will call it the medium category on shows. You get too much together, the public doesn't get the chance to appreciate the colors and the, the show. Uh, I personally would stay with 17. Uh, no, I mean, typically I would say let's spend more, but given um, looking at the, uh, the the budget, I think that 5,000 might be better spent somewhere else down the road. Mm -hmm. I agree with these two. The show last year was fantastic. Yeah. Um, I truly, you get too long and it starts to just, you know, so, but. And I would agree. So. All right, looks like 17 it is. All right, thank you very much for that. Uh, Board of Zoning Appeals meeting at the 4-3 meeting. Again, we'll be starting at 6, so there'll be a BZA meeting. City will be seeking various zoning variances. For, uh, city will be seeking various zoning variances for the construction of the potential Madison Street School project. Still researching uh, the Rite Aid and community parking. And a friendly reminder, the traffic study presentation addendum to traffic study has been signed to account for the removal of the Miami County project and to de determine when each recommended improvement is warranted and other items. Monday, April 3rd, 2023 at the regular council meeting, 
Uh, the presentation date may be pushed back to a meeting or two due to addendum noted above. And then ordinance 2022-59 residential trash can placement that was tabled for 30 days, revisit at April 3rd, 2023 meeting. And then he had a couple added notes uh, we discussed this morning was um, a, there should be a brief or a, I don't want to call it generic, um, Haddock's agreement at the next meeting. And then um, some discussion on uh, possibly working on the upstairs of the 101 where we had some ceiling uh, fallout to possibly do some work up there just in the one part of the upstairs to put, uh, is it two or three, four? Yep. Yeah, four offices up in that second story. Okay. So any discussion on any of those? Let me make sure I got all my notes. We had a, a pretty long meeting before. Um, so. All right, Mr. Lindsay, you have a question? Mr. Kirko, on the traffic study, Will that also include putting in a turn lane and taking away parking spaces? There's, there's always that potential, yes. Uh, and council would vote on that? Let me think about that. Uh, he, would, he would give it to us to vote on. I mean, I, 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 mean, I think. I, I, I don't know, you know, like in legal terms, but I'm going to guess. No, I don't need legal terms, just your opinion. I mean, I would think. Okay. I don't know. Right. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. um, I just had actually one quick question before we uh, move on uh, back to your uh, earlier reports. So on trees and stuff like that. So if you're going out of town and water dogs on your right, you know, the old train bridge is now the bike path. So there's trees growing up on the banks of where the creek is. So you really can't see the bridge anymore. Who's who do those trees belong to? Are they city? Are they county? I mean, you know? uh, there's city, but we've already removed the south side. We have a couple to remove on the north side, and we got pretty much a lot of those uh, trees removed, and then we have a little bit of underbrush work. Okay. Last summer, we yanked out everything on the south side of that trestle. Right. Yeah. The reason I was asking is, is that train truss, I mean, it, I know it's really nothing special per se, but I mean, it's, it's kind of a part of the town. And it's, you know, with the trees growing up over the bank now, it's hard to see it anymore. And, that bridge has always been kind of neat and people I think enjoy seeing it. So I was just wondering if Yeah, we have a little more work to do on it, but yeah, we were trying to clear it up. Well one is getting sun on it. Two. Keep it dry. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any other questions for Mr. Kitko, the service director, or Mr. Kitko, the assistant city manager? All right. Thank you to both of you for your reports, Mr. <laughs> Kitko. <laughs> You're very welcome. All right, moving on, uh, uh, comments from the members of the public. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, what you need to do is go to the podium and give us your name and address for the record. And then please try to keep your comments around five minutes. And we have a special guest tonight here. He sent me a, uh, a uh, sent, he had a question he wanted to get to me on and I asked him to come to a meeting because I know we all enjoy seeing young kids come and be active in the community. So. Zayden, uh, if you would go to the podium, and it's all yours, buddy. Well, my name is Zayden, and I want to fix the road. But the road is Brookfield, and I want it to be fixed because it's too bumpy and gravelly. I'm a fifth grader at New College Elementary, and, it's, and when I ride my scooter to school, when I get over to the side, it's too gravelly for me to ride. And well, it's, it's hard to ride in gravel, and you can get hurt if you if you fall, and hurt very badly. Mm -hmm. So I think it should be fixed, and and it needs mainly repaved up by the school, right where they kind of drive the cars drive into the school, because there's a lot of potholes right there, and it's pretty gravelly. Before I get to your question, and I, let, I think Mr. Kitko is going to chime in, did I get your address? Did he say it? What's your address? And uh, last name. 315 Prince Drive, 
Ferris Drive. And what's your last name? Lowry. L O W R Y. Lowry. Isn't that weird? His <laughs> same last name? No, you're spelled. With, with, his doesn't have an E. Oh. R, R Y. I say this okay. is a setup. <laughs> All right, um, so Zayden, uh, you heard, I don't know how much you were paying attention to part of our uh, discussions earlier about the street sweeper. So that's that's definitely something that the city is looking at, whether we buy one or we contract it out. So hopefully Mr. Kitko can, you know, either way, whether he contracts it out or we allow him to buy a new street sweeper. Um, either way, hopefully Mr. Kitko will get the, the gravel cleaned up. As far as getting the road repaved, I am going to hand that to him because he's got his list and what he projects. So. So every year, and it'll be coming up here in the spring, we do pothole uh, repairs. So if you have a specific pothole, uh, we try to hit them all. But if you ever see a pothole that's not hit, you can always call in and say, hey, I have a pothole, and maybe list the address of where it's at and say, I'm tired of driving over this pothole. And then we will put it on a list to fix if we are not specifically doing a um, our normal patching. <coughs> But we, we usually try to take care of potholes um, when we can, but especially this spring, we'll be doing a full citywide pothole repair. Now, I think maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe you, was it, maybe you just were busy down here. What, what, what do you think about milling fill on that road? Uh, it was done in 2002. I said the road out there. Yeah, it's. Is that where it's at? Okay. Yeah, it's okay. taken a beating. I mean, ever since they built the elementary, I mean that 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 road has taken. Uh, how much was you mean from like the line coming out of the school? Yeah, how far? From out? the line to to about Bayberry. So just what is it? it maybe you know, 100 feet, uh, maybe. School bus, school bus traffic and everything. Else. Yeah. It, yeah, I mean it's it's you know maybe not even the Bayberry, maybe the, maybe the to uh, to Drake. But right there, that, that, that entrance has taken a beating with all the, the extra vehicle traffic because that's where they, they, they shuttle everyone in and out for drop off and pick up. And a lot of people are turning there. So yes. Yeah, so, yep. Well, let, me, can, well, <clears throat> let me ask, go ahead and I'll put my question there. Thanks for coming and uh, addressing us this evening, young man. Uh, I do have a question for you, and maybe you can answer it for me. As far as the gravel, that you're hitting on your skateboard. What do you think? Scooter. Scooter. Oh, scooter, I'm sorry. Uh, what do you think it would take to fix that, that you could give Mr. Kitko some suggestions maybe on how to get that <coughs> gravel fixed? Uh, I just really want it to be cleared and not as much because it, on scooters it's hard to drive in like rocky situations mm -hmm. and gravel is, well, rocky and it kind of stops me so and there's potholes right there to go back to the And so I have to swerve into the road where the cars are, so it all intertwines to, to make it hard for me to do that. Okay. But, but what do you think it would take to get the gravel picked up off the road? Uh, I would, maybe the, uh, air, the air one to get it off. Oh, the air sweeper? Yeah. <coughs> Or maybe a broom and a dustpan. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, probably the air sweeper. Okay, I, I don't know if we can get anybody to do a broom and a dustpan, but be <laughs> council member. Leaf blower. What, um, leaf blower? Yeah, blow it up. Would it? I don't, I don't know what the budget looks like for that um, for further roads. <clears throat> Would it be possible just to uh, is an idea since we're going to be doing that work on. Um, it's a road phase two. Ross Upper Fenwick. Fenwick. Um, what would it cost to have them mill out just that small section of that and fill it? I mean, is it a possibility? Well, they don't mill. Uh, they do full depth. Okay. So they they use track hose for their work. Okay. I can talk when the county comes in what we got because a lot of mine's the ADA upkeep. Right. I could see if they move from, I just don't know which one I'm about to get right now done. So if I'm Henry, will they say, hey, yeah, we'll drive the mill over there real quick and mill it and fill it. Or, yeah, let me let me do some work on that part. I know we can fix the pothole portion. The 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 road uh, mill might be a different story. Okay. Well, anyway, hey. 
I mean, it, uh, how, I mean, if you get them in, I drive. It, it's it's bad. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's. Uh, I go there a couple days a week to pick up my son. There. It looks like you coming tonight and addressing council. It looks like we might be able to get something done, but I'm sure we'll be working on it. And Mr. Kitko will look into that for you. All right. Is there anything else, uh, council? Or does Deputy Major Sack have any perks he could bring with brooms? And yeah. Get, the, <laughs> get some of those good jailers yeah. over here. There, there is a crew that does. He may not be allowed thing. that close to a school. I don't know. <laughs> right. But might need more than one deputy yeah. that's so close to a school. All right. Well, Zayden, you have any more questions? No. All right. Well, thank you very much for coming. We appreciate it. You've been very good out in the audience and. I know not all of this is very exciting, but we appreciate you coming and talking to us, okay? Yeah. You're welcome back anytime. If you have any other questions, you come see us. Okay. Thank you, sir. And then, and then when you turn 18, you can run for council. That's right. There you go. Thank you, sir. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, moving on. Anyone else public comments at this time? All right, moving on to resolutions. None. We go to ordinances. Ms. Burnham. We have Ordinance 2023-20. This was introduced on March 6th. Public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the expenditure of funds in excess of $35,000 for a wastewater treatment plant expansion study. Thank you. Thank you. Motion by Ms. Eggleston, second by Mr. Roadball. And an explanation of this ordinance is, uh, as I had said in my um, report, basically Burgess and Nipel will take our information that we currently have at our plant, take the d new developments as if they were built out, and try and stage it to where we could expand periodically. And that price will be a not to exceed 44000 We will have multiple meetings with them as well before the final plan is completed. Council, any discussion? Mr. Lindsay. When we was talking about uh, the Clark County development, I mean, sorry, the uh, Miami County development, I thought the question was asked if our water and sewer plants would work for the developments that was coming. And I, memory tells me that I'm going to say you because it may have been Mr. Bird. I'm not sure which one said it. That we was only at 40% capacity in our water and our sewer plants. So Is water 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 runs about sometimes high 40 okay. to, to 50 some percent. So water we're usually pretty good. They're going to do a little bit of our water to make sure at build out. So you know 10 years down the road, um, and then wastewater we're about 65%. The wastewater we take uh, flows from Northampton. So sometimes that 125,000 gallons that we are required to give them, we have to make sure that that's always accounted for. So right now they only flow maybe 40,000, but you know, they're, they're looking at uh, wastewater could be 100,000, maybe 200,000 over at build out in 10 years. But that doesn't take into account, um, I don't wanna say this, the, um, uh, I and I that may come up uh, aboard as we uh, some of the older infrastructure ages mm -hmm. so you do get a little bit of I and I in there and then your wastewater plant and sometimes your water plant it's to operate at 80 percent so yeah we're a 1 million gallon a day plant it might be at 950,000 we we will be required at 800,000 to expand even though we have 200,000 in reserve we'll be we'll have to have a plan in place to expand at 800,000. Okay. So just because you have that capacity doesn't mean that you have it and you don't have to improve. Okay. So this is just to, to uh, tell us what we need to do in the future. In yes, yes. Years. As these phases go with each development, they're gonna <laughs> say, okay, you're gonna be getting close. You need to add this, this process, which will carry you into the um, next phase of those developments and this this states is just for wastewater so they're not doing anything with the drinking water 
drinking water, we have more room because see, we don't contract out any any okay. outside. So we still have sixty percent left. We still have sixty percent, but it, on on the side, he's going to look at our water numbers on a, on a very generic level okay. because water and wastewater, what goes in a house comes out the house. So like basically, yeah. So what's coming going out of the house is pretty much what's going to be coming in. So. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. All right, sir. Anybody else? And when you're ready. All right, Mayor Lowry. Yes. Councilman Vaughn. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Rodwald. Yes. So six zero. Ordinance 2023-22, introduction tonight, public hearing in action on April 3rd, 2023. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement for the sale of a portion of the Madison Street School parcel to the Clark County Land Reutilization Corporation. All right, other business. Uh, city offices will be closed on Friday, April 7th to observe Good Friday. Uh, any, before we move on, any other discussion? Uh, Mr. Mayor, sir. The, uh, uh, make a motion to excuse Mr. Brown. Second. Second by Mr. Uh, motion to excuse. Okay. Second by Mr. Bond. Okay. Mr. Grimm will be out for one more meeting after this, and then he should be back. All right. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Second six zero. All right. Then we will be going into executive session to consider the sale or donation of city property. Uh, I don't believe there will be any um, action after this meeting. Uh, but, uh, I need a motion to go into your move to go into executive session, consider the sale of the nation of city properties. Motion, motion by Mr. Lindsay, <laughs> second by Mr. Cook. <laughs> Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rodold? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Six zero. Okay, we're going to executive session. We'll do a five minute break real quick in case anybody needs to move to the back end of regular session. Second. Motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Mr. Roadwall. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman yes. Lindsay. Councilman Roadwall. Yes. Mr. Mayor, move to adjourn. Second. Second, <laughs> second by Mr. Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Roadwald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Seven, six, and we adjourn. Have a good evening, everyone. And cut.